All right, so we are back. So starting the hole off the same way with the hobby knife and then going to the 564 drill bit, which is uh, approximately a two mil. From there, we step it up to one eighth or a three mil drill bit. Uh, then we go to a 1364 so or five mil drill bit. Uh, then to a 1564, which is approximately a six mil drill bit. Um, and then for these bigger magnets in the top, I'm going to go one stage further, go to a quarter inch, or it's about 6.3 millimeters. Um, that's still quite not, not quite big enough for these, these larger magnets, so I end up kind of uh, using that same drill bit to hog them out along with the hobby knife. As you can see there, I made sure that I can fit a couple in each shoulder socket. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pack the chest cavity with uh, some milli putt. So just rip off little pieces, uh, use something uh, like I'm just using a little skewer here uh, with uh, that's dipped in water so the milli putt doesn't stick to it uh, to kind of just pack the body cavity uh, full of milli putt. Milli putt has like a working time of approximately three hours but it's pretty much hard at the end of the three hours. It's not three hours and then you have to let it dry. It's pretty much ready to go at that three hours. So make sure you do both sides at the same time. Uh, if you if you got enough milliput to do so, uh, and that way you're not wasting any. So here I go on the other side, uh, packing it out. Uh, trying to work quick, but not stressed quick, uh, you know, you do have like an hour and a half before it even starts to get hard. So uh, just, yeah, put your favorite show on in the background and uh, just work away. Uh, before you even mix the milli putt, make sure you have the one magnet glued on the wing and then put a second one on there, right? Because that is the one that'll be glued in there and pressed into the socket and you'll know uh, if it's enough milli putt, if it kind of looks like that at the end, you know, it lo looks like the magnet touched the end. So now all we have to do is wait for the milli putt to dry, and then we can glue the magnet in there. Uh, so I got both sides done. Uh, here's just, I kind of forgot to show, um, and I have a shitty camera recording, but basically we, we cut that little nodule socket off because uh, these magnets are so big, there's no drilling and, and really hiding them. So we're going to cut that little nodule off, um, and we're going to glue uh, the magnet right on the tip. The magnet will be uh, countersunk, basically into the shoulder, so we're not going to really see it anyways. Uh, but use my, my usual technique that was a little trickier because of how strong these magnets are. But... That's what it looks like finished. So now we're going to go into, we're going to drill the lower sockets. So the only difference with the lower sockets, we're still going to use a six by two mil magnet in the lower sockets. Um, but for those, we only needed to go up to the 15 60 force. Uh, we didn't need to keep going to the one eighth. So the milli putt is dry. Um, camera magic, you know. Uh, so we just put some glue on the magnet. We're going to press it into press it into the shoulder socket. We're going to get the other side, press it in, and we're going to hold it in the position we want for about 30 seconds. So when you're putting the magnets on the wings, make sure that they are attracted to each other. Again, with these big magnets, I believe they're approximately 7 by 4 millimeters. Uh, you want them to be attracted to each other because once you put them inside the hot tyrant socket, um, they're so strong that if they aren't, they will be working against each other, trying to push uh, each other out. Um, so this is uh, where we are right now. Um, so now we're gonna glue the six by two millimeter magnets in the bottom sockets and magnetize all the other arm configurations. I filled the upper arm sockets with some sticky tack just so the other magnets wouldn't get stuck in there. They're kind of hard to get out once they're in there. Um, you know, 
put the magnet on the corresponding wing, color the end black, uh, get it out on your hobby knife. Get some glue in the bottom of that socket, try to avoid the walls um, so the magnet doesn't prematurely stick too high. Uh, get the magnet out, normal technique. As you can see, the black side turned up. Um, I thought it was just a mistake I made, so I went to redo it here and it happened again. And that's when I realized that it was the, the magnet in the upper socket was uh, forcing that to turn. So I had to be very careful to make sure the black side is down. Another reason why you want to color the one side so you know right away, right? If I didn't have either side colored, I would have had no idea that magnet would have had flipped like that. Uh, so that's why it's a good idea to, to always color the one side uh, you want to go in the plastic so you get polarity right. But I managed to keep it uh, right side up, I guess, as you were, and push it in there with uh, the wooden skewer till it bottoms out. And then I held it in there uh, long enough to make sure it wasn't going to pop out from the strength of the other magnet. And here we go to the other side. Again, trying to get most of the glue on the bottom, not a whole lot on the walls. Put the magnet on the, the corresponding wing side, you know, color the side black, and get it ready on your hobby knife. And then now we know the issue we had on the other side, so we're going to be very careful, and we're going to keep the black side down, and we're going to press it in, and kind of just give it some force so we know the, the super glue sticks, and uh, it's not going to go anywhere. Now uh, set that aside to dry and we're going to work on the arms. So now we'll have something that looks like this, more or less. Um, and I did a little experimentation with the arms. Uh, so this has got a 5 by one millimeter on the lash whip here. And I think that's big enough and strong enough. Um, as you can see, it'll hold position and it's not constantly trying to fall down. So I think that's what we're going to go with. I'm going to test it out on the sword. I feel like the sword's a little heavier. Uh, so we'll see if it sticks. If not, we might just go up to another uh, 6 by 2 millimeter magnet. Uh, because we do want the arms to be able to stay up. So... Um, we're going to try the five by one on the sword and, uh, if it doesn't stick, we're going to remove it and we're going to put a 6.2, 6 by 2 millimeter magnet on it. But as you can see, so both the polarities right, so it'll stick in either lower for the winged or upper, the normal hive tyrant. Um, and then we'll do the same for the sword on this side. So now we're going to throw the sword into the socket and see approximately where we want to cut the end off. Um, so now we're going to line it up with the lash whip and try to make them the same. Find a good angle where the cutters will actually grab. You'll be able to cut that end off thusly. Um, and then throw the magnet in the socket. Uh, color the end black. Again, to make sure we get polarity right. I used another stack of magnets to pull that magnet out um, and then we're going to fire that magnet off onto the hobby knife. Uh, glue the arm, super glue as we're gluing everything, and then place the magnet on the socket there. And then we're going to try and make it even all the way around. So we got the sword and we got the lash whip. Um, they're fairly well magnetized. So um, yeah, we're gonna go with uh, the five mil on the rest of the weapons. On the guns, we might go to the six uh, by two. Um, but as far as the weapons go, you know, they're not, trying to slip down all the time. Um, when it comes to the guns, we might jump it up to a, a six 
by two mil, uh, just because there will be more weight out front here. Um, but as far as all just the single-handed weapons, so basically just the Scything Talons and the Swarm Lord Swords we're going to uh, do with the five mil. So I'm going to throw it in time-lapse mode and I'm going to get all those done. For all the melee weapons, I use the 5 by one millimeter magnet. So remember to check your polarity. Um, use super glue. And firing all these off shouldn't be too, too time consuming. And then for the guns, I didn't want to have to do it twice. And I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm using the 6 by 2 mil magnet. So I was just measuring it up against the, the arm socket there and then cutting it off. I put my thumb over the piece of plastic here just to kind of prevent it from going flying. So that's a technique you can use. Uh, I was using the magnets on the hobby knife uh, to check polarity. Um, and then of course gluing the sockets just like we've been doing. Give the magnet a good press, make sure it stays in place there and try to center it on the joint as best as possible. And set it aside to dry. For the adjoining sockets of the guns, we're going to plastic cement it together just so it's nice and strong and not floppy. You could use a magnet, but if you glue it, it'll be a lot stronger. So we're just going to put both sides of the arms in and then stick the socket in the gun and just leave it on the model to dry. Uh, do that for both the weapons. And so here we're done, the, the final product in the Swarm Lord configuration. Uh, you can move his head a couple different ways. Uh, you can move the, the weapons up or down. Um, you can cut the, the ends in different angles so you have uh, either his arms out or in more. Um, and that'll give you like a few different poses uh, to work with. And then of course we magnetized everything so you can take, you know, the arms off, the head off. Uh, we'll put the normal hive tyrant head on with bone sword and lash whip. Uh, put the stranglethorn cannon on there. You know, if you want to run them with the scything talons, then you can do that as well. Or, of course, you know, the what's meta right now, the heavy venom cannon with scything talons. I don't know if the scything talons are meta, but the, the heavy venom cannon is for sure. Then of course you want to do winged hive tyrant, you know, just take the body off, click it in the, the winged hive tyrant legs. The guns are a little tricky to get off, especially if you know you're trying to film it, but if you're doing it off camera, it's pretty easy. Uh, you know, move the scything talons down, and you can throw the wings on, and then you got your winged hive tyrant ready to rock. Um, the wings are staying up, no problem. And then of course, you know, winged hive tyrant with bone sword and lash whip. Basically, be able to run whatever you want. Again, struggling a little bit to get the stranglethorn cannon in there. Um, but once it's in there, it's solid. It's not going to fall out or anything. And then, of 
course, heavy venom cannon. Um, you can see it's kind of, this one's kind of interfering with the wing a little bit. Uh, I think that's just the nature of the kit, so you could pull the wing out, kind of adjust it. Either way, I think it looks good, but there you go. There is your fully magnetized Hive Tyrant kit for whatever options you want to run. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any requests for any kits you want to see magnetized, let me know in the comments below or message me or however you feel like you can get into contact with me. I do collect Tyranids and Blood Angels, so those kits will probably take priority. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, Turvagon slash Tyrannofex. But uh, yeah, please like and subscribe and thank you guys so much.